the Lower Dnipro, swampy marshes, a huge cluster of river islands near the Black Sea interwoven into the bed of a mighty river, they form one of the most picturesque landscapes. This is a rare corner of wildlife, preserved close to densely populated cities and villages. Here man coexists with nature, giving it an advantage. The National Nature Reserve Park The Boris fan Slavutich, Dnipro. So much strength and power, the historical past is retained in the names of one great river, its waters crossing the territory of three Slavic states, overcoming more than 2,000 kilometers, seek to embrace the Black Sea. On the approaches, the Dnipro is divided by many spill streams, islands and channels. The lower reaches of the river are stretched out along a channel for 100 kilometers and demonstrate landscapes that don't resemble one another. Getting past the dam of the Kahovka hydroelectric power station, the Dnipro forms a pre-outlet section. Here, before the approaches to the city of Kherson, for centuries the river-washed islands stretched along the channel. Their elevated and dry areas are covered with floodplain forests, and marshy lowlands are rare here. Below the mouth of Dnipro and to the Dnipro Bug estuary, the plains are almost entirely dominated by swamp sedge, cattail, and an abundance of reeds. This is a so-called delta. Even the ancient Greeks noticed that the lower reaches of this great river are almost triangular in shape and resemble the capital letter of their native alphabet, delta. That's what a delta looks like. The main two channels, Vach and Bakai, which are navigable. There is still a huge number of small rivers, which cross the islands in a perpendicular manner. Some are overgrown with grass, others go deep into the islands and form a variety of estuaries. Below, closer to the Dnipro Bug estuary, woody vegetation is lost on many islands, and we can see solid reed beds right up to the horizon. Water channels crisscross the islands in many different directions. That is why they have an irregular or rounded shape. Low and swampy, they look like saucers. Forests are rare on such islands. Forests only lie along the shores in elevated places. They were observed by the ancient Greek historian Herodot, sailing almost two and a half thousand years ago along the shores of the Borisfan. Describing his impressions, he calls it the main river. Geological monuments, outcrops covered with rare steppe and sandy plant species tell us about the more ancient origin of the Lower Dnipro. They have adapted to extreme survival on rocks under the scorching sun, as did the inhabitants of the delta, who found refuge in excessively wet and marshy places. The marshes of the Lower Dnipro have become a haven for hundreds of rare species of plants and animals that need protection and a hospitable home for migrating birds. Having spawned in the waters of the Dnipro, the sturgeon and herring return to the marine area, replenishing the ichthyofauna of the Black Sea. So, it was strategically important to take the Lower Dnipro under protection after the signing of an agreement with the EU. The Lower Dnipro has a transboundary impact on the Black Sea Basin. Therefore, we have an effect on fish fauna, living water resources. The park is one of six in Ukraine where migratory birds stop. Therefore, we have an effect on fish fauna, 
шести мест, на которых останавливаются перелетные птицы. In addition, these protected areas are not marked by kilometers of untrodden wilderness trails. Rather, the opposite, the National Nature Reserve Park Scientific and Production Enterprise is a territory where man's influence on natural areas is excessively large. Вот эта территория, 80 тысяч, 177 гектаров. A territory of more than 80,000 hectares is not possible without anthropogenic pressure, as we have more than 40 village councils and two big cities on our territory. Селочный совет находится, мы граничим с селочным советом, и два самых больших города, то есть очень большая, это самая... This is the largest anthropogenic load of all nature reserves in Ukraine. ...находится на территории Украины. To preserve these places in their original form, a human must learn to coexist with nature, regarding it to be a priceless gift to find a golden mean that will enable these natural lands to be used and not to cause them any harm. The Natural Nature Reserve Park has four zones. The largest one is economic, and there are minimal restrictions on people. The following zones of stationary and regulated recreation occupy more than 20% of the national park's territory. What's the difference? Stationary assumes recreation facilities, camping areas, hotels. In the regulated recreation area, tourists are temporary guests. Walking along echo paths, water or hiking routes, captivating by the picturesque landscapes and visitors leave the park. While a journey on excursion routes can last from one and a half to four hours, the park also has nature reserves to which hiking trails do not lead. On the outskirts of the village of Lvove, downstream of the Dnipro, limestone layers hang on a steep right coast. Alternately, they count the nearly 20 millionth history of our planet. Such amazing geological outcrops provide distinct diversity to the floodplain landscapes of the National Nature Reserve Park. Geologists counted 19 layers of limestone here, which accumulated at the bottom of the Sarmatian Sea. The sea was enormous, stretching from Vienna to the Urals. It was deeper, then shallower, and it was thanks to these transgressions of the sea on the offense retreat, which meant that layers of limestone accumulated. At the bottom, about two-thirds is whitish limestone, deep and old sediments. Above the one we call shell, limestone interspersed with mollusk shells. The accumulation of sedimentary rocks ended about three and a half million years ago, when this area rose above sea level. And the Dnipro completed a picturesque landscape, undermining the right bank. It formed expressive ledges. From the beginning of the Ice Age, they were supplemented with layers of lowest rocks, clay, covered with soil, in which only species that could grow in the extreme conditions of rocks and stony outcrops could survive. Endemic plants have found shelter on these limestone carbonate soils, which we won't see in the floods of the lower Dnipro. The rosettes of sage, revealing their huge leaves, are ready for winter. Covered with whitish hairs, they leaned on the ground, warmed by the last rays of the sun. Thyme, covering irregular slopes with a branched carpet, does not stick to scents, even in autumn. Lichens have also adapted themselves to this extreme existence. About 60 species can be found on these stones. This unique complex, which was first shown to geologists, was investigated further by botanists. Ecologists have now included it in the list of reserve areas of Kherson region, and it should be a local nature reserve. 120 hectares should be declared a landscape reserve. The same Sarmatian limestones come to the surface at the White Lake. These geological outcrops can be seen descending downstream from the Dnipro. The stone rocks block the path to the springs of the White Lake that make their way, recalling the multi-million past of these places, their historical value. On the conditions of the reserve, where the influence of human beings is minimal, will allow them to remain in their original form.
The Aleksandrovsky and Stanislavsky reserves are one such example. The flat landscape of the Kherson steppes is bordered by real mountain ranges. 15-meter-high lowest rocks have grown at the foot of the Dnipro Bug estuary. These landscapes were opened to tourists about 10 years ago. Perhaps that's why they've managed to survive. While humanity was shaping its history over the last two million years, geological processes were shaping these wonderful landscapes. We call them the Kherson Mountains. It's all the work of a glacier. The glacier has formed a layer of Lois over the last two million years. Lois looks like fine dust that's been wonderfully sifted, almost like flour. Only the wind could have moved and fanned it out. Particles left over from melted glaciers and the destruction of rocks by frost were also a source of dust. It was in a moment of calm, when the glacier had stopped, that layers of clay were deposited. They looked more like darker stripes on steep slopes. And if you penetrate deep into the Kherson Mountains and walk along the ravines, you will see a view resembling the American Cordilleras. But the miracles do not end there. The logical continuation is the mysterious entrance to the dungeon, which has a scientific explanation. We see how water creates such unique caves. Lois and sand get wet and let water flows through, while clay, on the contrary, holds it. Flowing from the clay barrier, water seeps into the depths, moistening the lower layers of Lois and sand. Having become heavy, they collapse inside a mountain elevation and form cavities. But such a cave is not eternal. As we know, water wears away stone and, of course, handle clay easily. After a year or two, the overhanging layer of clay collapses under the weight of the water flows. This is how a ravine appears. From the point of view of the beauty of the landscape, one can observe sparse ravines, various forms of relief, vegetation, which are not similar to any others. The local plants resemble the Kazakh steppes, transitional forms from steppe to desert. The Kherson Mountains are decorated with steppe vegetation even in autumn. Gray-haired cloths laying down on dusty lower sediments looks like a calm harvester. Its dead stems, ready for winter, resemble mammoth wool. On the edge of the lowest layers, you can see the hanging roots of ephedra and cochia, drenched with lichens. Bonded loose lowest, these are plants inhibit the destruction of the mighty steep. Such column formations are not eternal. If there is a heavy downpour, they begin to collapse, and we can see such erosive processes directly in action along the coast. It seems that steppe flowers, devoid of sufficient moisture, look sad and unattractive. In fact, even the autumn palette of grass carpet and lowest layers is replete with colorful patches. The late flower in wormwood on the slope is a native resident here. There are several species of it. One of the rarest, which dominates in the Kazakhstan steppes most of all, is the lurch wormwood. Grayish from thick, fluffy hairs, as if covered with snow, it reminds one of the approaching cold. The bush of late flower in thrift looks like a bright cloud. Dry spike comes off and rolls on the steppe, like thumbleweed, scattering the seeds. But before the cold, the sea lavender still blooms and attracts insects collecting nectar. Hoover flies actively fly. The fact is that dipterans tolerate cool temperatures well, heat up quickly, and easily thanks to ground beetles. They vibrate and warm the body, and they pollinate flowers in cold conditions. As it turns out, bees and wasps are not the only one to have a fluffy or striped body. But hoover flies, unlike their twins, are dipterans like flies, and it is better to distinguish them on this basis. Diligently turning over their wings, they worm themselves and pollinate late autumn flowers. But why does a fly pretend to be a bee? It just wants to confuse her enemies. They know that the owner of a striped back will, when defending itself, surely use a poisonous sting. Cheating in the world of insects or mimicry is another way to adapt in a dangerous and unpredictable natural world. The more you study nature, the greater the number of new questions that appear. Travel with us, discover undiscovered Ukraine.